Hey guys, welcome to a new podcast. We're here in Australia, specifically Rouse Hill at the headquarters of Stash. Very exciting. Uh, we have a ton of videos coming out, but I did want to do a podcast and chat with the guys. So, welcome guys. What's going on? Thanks, man. Yeah. Hey, Larry. Thanks for being here. Thanks welcome for coming. to Australia, yes. man. Of course, of course. This place is absolutely ridiculous. Um, you know, right off the bat, uh, most people don't realize uh, that we've now launched ammo in Australia, which is kind of a big deal. As I've told you before, you know, we've had 800 requests and we haven't done anything because we haven't found the right partners until you guys. Are you sure it's us? <laughs> yeah. We are very fortunate, mate. Yeah, Thank no, you. I think yeah. I appreciate it. And this place is amazing. And of course, we have a beautiful background, just a little old car right here. Um, yeah, nice Corolla. <laughs> it, looks, it looks fantastic. Um, but yeah, so as, as we do on the podcast, I usually ask a couple of questions. I want to hear some backstories. It doesn't all have to be about cars, how you got into to business, the, the ups and downs and failures and all that kind of stuff. Um, so right off the bat, and again, this is just a conversation. We can, you can take it any, any, anywhere, any place you want. But uh, obviously, how did Stash, uh, we'll start there. How did Stash come to be? Obviously, there's more things above here, but this place, yep. I think you said 200 and, 250,000 square feet, which is what, I don't know what that is in meters. 250,000 square feet, the main building, yeah, yeah. which is 23,000 square meters. Right. Yeah. So and you keep 150 cars? 250 at the moment. Right. Um, and then, as um, we sort of showed you, we're putting hoist in to go to about 400 car capacity here in Stash. Hoist equals car lift, by stack the way. Yeah, stack us. Stack us. Yeah. Stack us. Yeah. Stackers. Yeah. Stackers. <laughs> um, and then you have, each one of them is covered, which I don't know. I know I keep going back to that, but any car place I've ever gone into, it's always been like a flex to have them not covered. Um, it's weird. We're paid for discretion and storage, right. so it's sort of counterintuitive to hide someone's car away from the public and then flex on it and show it. So it's sort of, <laughs> and it's not our stuff too. Like it's, it, yeah. We're yeah. just the custodians to kind of make sure that they're kept as happy as they can be. Yeah. And I think a lot of our customers are super happy that we are that way as well. Right. Like, I, I can't just like, oh, this is one thing, but like, it's got, you gotta have something in the background. Right, yeah, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't look say that, yeah, the yeah, irony yeah, no, of that. We don't show anything <laughs> off, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. just like open doors uh, and have This is off for sale. It's, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's going into the bargain bin. Yeah. Um, but we, yeah, it's just something that we wanted to stick with was just kind of the name. The name doesn't give a lot away. The building doesn't give a lot away will kind of need to be a little bit more exposed with the product side of things. And now that the detailing has kind of taken a bit more of a stronghold, but right. initially we're just like, let's just be quiet. And, it, and, and car community is compact. Like the people are out there ready to, to be you mm. know, heard. And, and news travels quite like really fast. Apparently and pretty quickly. Like, well, very word, quickly. Word of mouth in the car community. You've been in this place, you see yeah. an event, do you see what they're doing? Like that's, that's how you grow. And our, our ad very spends, organic in that yeah, way. Ad, ad spends is nothing. No. And, and then so I saw, when I saw you guys name Stash, the first thing I did with Jordan, I was like, oh, that's a, <laughs> that's a brilliant name. But on the way here, Scott was saying that he was calling it like Car Ruma or I'd, something or something. Yeah. Like in the early days of sort of throwing some ideas around and Karuma, Kuruma, Japanese word for car, car room. But I'm, I'm very literal in the way I think. And then yeah. when I sort of um, brought Josh on board with the concept of, of this business right. and, he, and he's like, we've <laughs> each got our, we've each got our things. That's a I'm hard like, no. Okay. <laughs> you, you come up with the name yeah. then, mate. Yeah. And so, yeah, Joshy was given creative freedom hmm. and like. There's no know. ego between us around business as well. It's like our ideas are kind of just as valuable as each other's. So neither one of us chopped, well, I did chop you down on that, but like, it's not a like, how dare you? Like we're not married to our ideas. It's no. kind of just a, let's, it was a good choice, by the way. Yeah, I think Stash is, is spot on. You know, the, the proverbial example is Apple and, and computers. Yeah. It has nothing to do with each other, but you know, ammo. Yeah, ammo. And yeah. I think it would have been weird to have been like, uh, I don't know, Rouse, Rouse, Rouse Hill, Hill Car, car Storage. storage or which something. is what my dad would have probably called it. Yeah. Right. Very old school, very literal. Right. Um, you know, we are in the Rouse Hill Business Park. Right. But so, you know, there, there's a time and a place for that. Right. But then Stash Group is, is our name, mm. the technical name. And so it allows us huge opportunity in the future. Like we did not really think that sort of four or five years ago when we we're fleshing out the business that we would be selling an automotive product. Right. But under our brand and the concept of the business is we were able to explore these ideas. Mm. And you know, a partnership with Ammo was just a yeah. huge opportunity. Now, when That's you it. first started, did you, did you think you were bringing car detailing and Brody and all that stuff? Was that part of the business plan? It was 
there was always going to be a partnership, but mm. we didn't know if it was in Stash or with a separate business. Meaning so like when people sublet. came, came Sub- in. Subleasing. Right. Like, hey, you know, a dude comes in, you got to wash the car because it's got, it's got to go out or yeah. whatever. You didn't think you were ever going to bring mm. it in-house. No. And so now Bra- you've definitely like, you, you brought it in-house. Yeah. So yeah. Brady was working under another banner previously and that was great. He was sort of subleasing the space from us and we worked really well together. Um, but then as Stash was developing and the opportunities were coming, we're like, oh, mate, this just makes sense to bring it all under one umbrella and then let's grow it quicker you know mm-hmm. when you combine the, the both sides of the business they go so well hand in hand Makes everyone what everyone that's using our storage business has pretty much had their car worked on by Brody. so it was it just was very logical to bring those yeah. and those that was a separate together. business of yours yes yes so i've been detailing for seven years now and so mobile and then i've been here as long as these guys have um, set up from the beginning um, so I've grown with them and then, yeah, kind of coming under the Stash brand was, was the right move. Right. Um, but yeah, same for detailing, where storage turns into detailing, detailing turns into storage. A lot of my clients that I've built up have ended up storing cars here. Yeah. So. It's, most people have, when, you're, when you got the bug, you got multiple cars. Yeah. And nine times out of ten, like, there's no yeah. place to park half of them. And yeah. New, yeah. New York City is like the prime example of that. A lot of wealthy dudes there, of course, into cars. You can't even park one car in New York City. You know, you know what I mean? Yep. That's like a $2,000, $2,500 parking space just to have like the convenience of going into yeah. Westchester, mm-hmm. like getting up north or whatever. Mm-hmm. Imagine having five in New York City. No. So there's a couple of places that do that. Um, and that's how I first got started. Where, yeah. you know, when I'm looking behind here, obviously the cameras can't see, but we'll throw some B-roll over there. You can see the, the matte walls. And, and uh, when I first started, at, it, it was called uh, Collector's Car Garage kind of feel that that name i think they changed it since but um we had the same thing where we had ammo on a black wall and mm-hmm. it was in a car so i just Ooh. felt like the feng shui and yeah. like the the just indefinable like th- i was like this feels right yeah. um because as they know everybody listening um we just we, it's very hard to get products ammo products specifically mm. not in the u.s because mm. the shipping is just a complete nightmare since covid everything went to like crazy i mean for, everybody went crazy in covid obviously mm. but in terms of the shipping we have never come even close to coming back to normal rates no um so uh, this was a great way to get back into the australian market and yeah. we're, we're pretty stoked we have a ginormous party coming this uh this afternoon you guys uh we'll, we'll shoot b-roll all the behind the scenes all of that stuff but we have like the outside how many like a, a thousand uh, cars if you like yeah, stack prob- them here? probably like, we, I mean, we like, could fit a thousand around. cars out there yeah. so That's we've got insane. there's about 500 signed up and we got about 50 to the vip workshop before right and then you know just word of mouth in public that'll show up we, about, we get about a huge amount of that. yeah so, so today we're shooting a, a podcast on the day that's like the most hectic crazy yeah. day like, <laughs> like let's shoot yeah. a podcast it's, why not it's throw... really here for 10 days we're gonna make the most of it yeah exactly the so storm, Super exciting. So what's your yeah. backstory? So you were doing it for seven or eight years, detailing on your own, coming here, taking care of the car. And how long has this been here? Two, two and a half years. Two and a half years, yeah. So how are you? So, you were just detailing for seven years in, in general, but for when they started, you came in. Yeah, well, I actually, so after school, I went to uni to study mechanical engineering. Right. Um, I always wanted to be around cars, design cars. Um, kind of didn't work out. I didn't do the subject to prepare me for that. So it was a little bit hard. I was kind of immature. Mm. Um, and then I went and did my mechanical uh, apprenticeship, so got qualified as a mechanic. There was just no money in it. I wasn't really seeing the things that I wanted to see. I was servicing basic cars and, and doing all that. So I got good at what I was doing there. Um, and then detailing, I was always into detailing my own cars and, mm. and that was a weekend hobby. Uh, and then, yeah, I kind of got involved in doing mobile detailing. Uh, so did that for a good amount of time. Um, and that was just, yeah, hard slog, just doing as many as I could in a day, sure. the big jobs, the small jobs, um, but built a good reputation and a good uh, client base based on that. And then, uh, yeah, got on board with these guys here. Uh, and yeah, two and a half years later, now involved with them um, directly. Uh, and now kind of you as a mentor and, and learning to detail from your YouTube channel. Um, we've landed here, so it's kind of... A and so there's no relation between you and me, other than we look at each other? No, there has Every, to be. No, 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 no. <laughs> Every Don't single person's been like, oh, do you guys relate? They're like, yes, yes. We've <laughs> we been calling Aussie Larry. It, was it? Aussie Larry. Our, Aussie Larry, <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. We're 10,960 miles away. It's a long way. Really? Yeah, it's a long I was way. like, my son was doing like a, how far are you going kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know, like really far away. Yeah. And did the math. 10, That's really far away. 
Or what's really creepy is like when you fly across the United States, it's like if something goes wrong, you're like, all right, like hope you just like kind of land, hopefully you don't yeah. like blow up or whatever. When oh, you're, sure. at, it's, I didn't realize when you, <laughs> yeah. he's like, okay, we're leaving LAX. And if you've ever been to LAX, I mean, it's right on the water. Yeah. So it's like, you're two seconds up. And you're like, oh, yeah. Like what you're, in, you're yeah. in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Like yeah. that's foreign for you, but not for us. No, yeah. you, Always. you guys go over all the time. Have to yeah. Yeah. You've yeah. got no choice. Unless so it's, like, if you don't want to leave. 15, 16 hours for you? Same. To LA. To yeah. LA, right? Yeah. But yeah. It, I mean, 16. it's against the, yeah, we had a, LA. It, yeah, we had a, um, we had a um, headwind the whole time. Yeah, yeah. I was watching the screen. Again. I couldn't yeah. sleep the whole time. Yeah. 15 hours after a six hour flight. Kind you of, did, kind you of, did well to stay up yesterday, mate. What's that? impressed. You did well to stay up. I did stay up. I started crashing. You came over and took a photograph because <laughs> there's a camera. There's something behind. I don't know what you were doing. Yeah. But you took a picture, like you smile. Were, and I was like, you were glassy. <laughs> you were I really glassy. Weird, like, oh, I yeah. can't do this anymore. <laughs> I was about to that I'm that staying one. in your uh, in your uh, um, pool house, which is amazing. And uh, we are like. I mean, you guys, it's probably normal, obviously, for you. No, it's but, not. Man, <laughs> yeah, it's not normal, normal for you? I live in a one-bedroom apartment. This bloke lives on how many hectares? Seven. Oh, yeah. yeah. What, oh, the farm. Yeah. 1,500? Uh, 700 acres. Yeah. 700. It used to be 1,500. Yeah. Oh, that's what it was. That yeah. Was seven, yeah. Yeah. Only 700 acres. My apartment's 50 square meters. So. Okay. Well, but, well, I live, but I live where we were yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then it's I have, relative. And I have right? to come out here, I get the benefits of that, and then you get the benefits of that out here. It's kind of... I just, I've never woken up, looked out, and seen, yeah. like, horses going crazy and... And then we're, he gives us a tour of the place, and I called my wife, and uh, he's, I was like, hey, in the morning, I got to get up and do my Larry routine and run and, you know, do some sort of exercise. And he's like, yeah, mate, just like run on the thing. And I was like, oh, cool. And he's like, if you go down that path, you're going to have to bring the dog. And I was like, cool. I was like, wait, why I got to bring your dog? And he's like, well, if, you know, if something goes wrong, like the dog will be able to fend it off and you can run away. And I was like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> And then I looked over at him and he was like, no, mate, that's for, I was like, oh, sh all right, I'm not going to go down there. And then I'm like, all right, I'll just run around all of these beautiful rocks, these formations and stuff. <laughs> I'll, I'll go up and take a selfie. And he's like, no, mate, don't. <laughs> he's like, if you go over there, there's going to be snakes. And then I asked the dumb question. I'm like, what kind of snakes? And he's like, this snake, that snake. And I was like, actually, I don't know anything you're saying. I was like, what's the, yeah. he's like, they're going to bite you and they can kill you. And yeah. I was like. Maybe I'll just go for a walk right down the middle of the Stick road. On the road. Yeah, yeah, pat pat the cows, mate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so then I walk up to this horse uh, and I'm like, I'm doing this moment. I'm like, this is the greatest <laughs> moment in my life. And like the whole thing, right? And I have a little DJI camera and I'm zooming in and out. And the horse is looking at me like, what is this guy? And I think he may have assumed I was one of the caretakers or something. I, I don't know. Mm. And they, they started galloping and the ground is shaking in this moment <laughs> and the stars and the moon. And I'm like, I need to move here, right? Yeah. And then the DJI goes like, beep, 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 it makes oh, a sound, man. and the horse spooks. Oh, yeah. And goes down, like lowers itself, oh. and then pushes off to the side to basically get out of there quickly. And so when it, oh, yeah, when yeah, it yeah. pushed, like dirt flew up, oh. I fall backwards. <laughs> it's all on camera. I fall backwards. I'm like, oh, <laughs> and the horse starts sprinting, and I'm like, I gotta go home. Man, it's so <laughs> theatrical, man. Where, uh, it was like, <laughs> it was the highest like moment of like up yeah. and down. It'd been a long day. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that was all on the first day. Yeah. More exciting than a hotel room. Let's put it that way. Oh, it was great. It was, it was really great. So yeah. Um, that's yeah. a good way to see the country. This, this is a good good place to yeah. be. A great country. Um, from the beach to the bush. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, we, it's a good when way we first landed, it. we went to the beach um, and, yeah. and had some fun there, which I think is a smart thing. After you yeah. get off a 23-hour flight, yeah. it was 21, but two-hour layover. Yep. Um, kind, cool. of, kind of a crazy day. But yeah, um, I'm super stoked that we're, we're doing this uh, relationship. I know we won't have a ton of time um, because we have like 500 people showing Soon. up in a little bit, but I wanted to shoot podcast just kind of give people a feel of where we are um, the, the folks that I'm working with me mm. you guys and then uh, what we're trying to do so in terms of uh, the behind the scenes we've shot a bunch of episodes uh, um, on the studio channel as well of, of them picking and packing and kind of doing the uh, what we're doing in the United States but doing it here and I show uh, that process so make sure you check that out as well um, but I think we have a couple more minutes I know we're running out of camera uh, space here but uh, so we talked about you starting the company what's above us though that's the one thing so yeah so in this facility we have uh, another business that's a furniture retail business here in australia like, called oz design furniture yeah he's actually you. look at Supply, oz design. except for the wheel except, the yeah. tires isn't not out. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah sort of we, we're building this building to service that business yeah. and then this basement floor down here that we've turned into stash was kind of vacant and we weren't sure exactly what to do with it um, we're a car family as well we sort of have a collection of um, vehicles that we sort of ran out of space 
in where we stored them out on the farm. Mm -hmm. And then we sort of said, we can't be the only people with this issue mm -hmm. in Sydney. There's got to be other collectors that don't know where to put these things. Hence, Stash was born. That was about eight years ago. As the concept grew in my head and the level of opportunity and depth that a business required, I was like, okay, I can't do this myself. Josh and I, old mates, 20 odd years, part of the same friendship group. He was the first guy that popped in my head. I said, Josh, you want to come run this, you know, business and be partners and let's play with cars, mate. Mm. And he's got a really interesting background. Um, I'm the sort of the, the business analytical side of it. And Josh is a creative front of house side. Um, we balance it out each other really well. And then, yeah, we sort of spent a few years coming up with the concept, fleshing it all out. And then we got hand over the site sort of three years ago, yeah. had to put the epoxy on the floor, you know, fit out everything, the office, the detailing studios with, with Brody. Power. Power electrical <laughs> for the trickle charges, you know, everything. Um, and then, yeah, here we are, 240 odd cars later, an ammo partnership, you know, it's, mm. it's exciting. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. It's huge. It's kind of, it's and not, so not what did you do before this? So I, I've got a design background, left school, went and did a design degree, didn't do much with it. I was would have preferred to be at the pub than be in class. But yeah. now in hindsight, that was a massive waste and I would love to do that again now. Yeah. Um, but then I went into retail and then I went into film and television as a stylist, um, did a bit of fashion stuff, did a bit of- What does TV. that mean? Like, a, somebody, <coughs> so like in front of the camera or behind the no, camera? No, behind the camera. I hate being in he front of the camera. He loves the camera. I'm very happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, as yeah. you shift in your- Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, <laughs> this is awesome. No, 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 no. It's, <laughs> yeah. uh, so I ended up in, in network television land, taking care of talent and making sure that everyone's happy and well-dressed. What does that mean? Like they get on camera and you're like... No, that before they go on camera, while they're on camera, after they're on camera. Um, like their clothing yeah, specifically? Yeah, pure, pure clothing. Okay. Um, that is just something I fell into. Always had a passion for cars as a kid. Mum and dad drove Hondas and Toyotas and just said, never buy anything not Japanese. You buy one car, you drive it into the ground. But I was in the backseat of the car going, I like Porsches. Mm. It was like... It came from nowhere. I don't know where it's come from, but right. for some reason, the Carrera just like spoke to was you. my thing. Like right. I had a, a 964 Turbo like alarm clock, and it revved up, and I just, like I had posters and stuff. And my parents are like not car people; they're very practical, very hardworking, intelligent people. And they're like, cars is not it, and right. it wasn't back then. Cars was not it. Like you do not drop money on cars. These days, a little bit differently. Mm. Um, and so I was I'd finished up a film uh, as a uh, in in costume. And then Scotty pulled me on to do this and then was like, what do you reckon? I was like, fine, love it, let's do it. And I think it was the, the fork in the road was like opportunity to grab something by the reins and like own it, start to finish. Right. And I think that's where like a lot of new companies fall over is that there's 10 cooks in the kitchen. And Scotty just threw the keys at me and said, just do, do with it what you want. Make it, what, like I trust you, you do it, stayed out of the way. Um, which is a dream opportunity. No one ever does that. No. no one ever says, you make it look good and it stays out of well, it. Well, the truth is when he emailed like all those years ago and I was like, ah, oh, no, I'm not kind of blah, blah, blah. When I looked at the website and saw your designs mm. and the way that the, the look and the feel and my word, you know, the je ne sais quoi, this, this undefinable characteristic, it really harkened back to, especially the, uh, the uh, what's that thing over there from what Facebook? Do you, what do you see? The tapestry? The no, no. The vending machine. The vending machine. Oh, yeah. Um, the vending machine, I was like, oh my gosh, because that's when we first did creative all those years ago yeah. with, uh, with the group in New York City. That was the concept of, I saw that and I saw the website. I saw the way that the photographs are, are done. And I was like, wow, the, yeah. the, the design team uh, was, is spot on. I was like, oh, we should have a conversation with you. That, that's yeah. the truth of how this all led to, and Which then when I started talking to Scott, cool, I was like, yeah. oh, it's like he actually understands business. Well, that's like, it. And, the, and, and the thing is, so <laughs> I can get the crayons and the, and the glue out and make things look nice. Yeah. Backing it up and f executing it yeah. is something that Scott is like, if Scott gets his head onto something, it's getting done. Like yeah. there's, there's no time wasted. It's getting done mm. this afternoon, um, which is one of Scotty's best attributes is just like the ability to start and finish something. A lot of people have these ideas. And no, then yeah. they're all up this, yeah. and then, and you can't like grab them. You just, no, they're no. just, they're just ideas. Yeah. But until it's in dirt, it's nothing. So, that's kind of why it works really well. We stay out of each other's way with, with certain things. And, and, and they always say, don't mix like family and, and business. Scotty's worked in a family business for Used to how it. long? Yeah. 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 And, and, and I consider Scott family and, and a lot of my friends family, like it's, you shouldn't do it, but 
we're in this far and we have not had a single tiff. We listen to each other. Yet. At, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll talk tonight. How about tonight? Yeah. We've got, we've got 10 straight days with everyone. Yeah. That's what uh, Jordan said on the way here. He's like, ah, man, 10 straight days with you and, uh, you know, one-on-one. -on -one, I'm going to need a little break. Yeah. You'll be right. We'll be right. We'll I love how we're doing this right now yeah. before, like, the walls. This is your idea. Of, yeah, no, yeah. I was like, why don't we just add some more uh, Yeah, another more pain. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but that's... Like I, I gotta say, like working with Scott's been unbelievable. Like it's, I've had really cool employees in my past. I've never worked for people that I don't like working with, so it's mm. really nice to kind of continue that journey. Mm. Um, but in something that is quite high risk, it's like the stakes are. There's a lot of money going around this place, and we needed to make it work. But there was not one moment where it kind of cracked. Where we're like, oh, this is all a waste. Like, mm. what are we doing here? We gotta go mm. fold it in. And, and when it feels like that, Scotty just doubles down, and we <laughs> turn turn it like turn it up to eleven and. And, then, and then when with all of that, then you just like dump all of ammo on top. Yeah, that's of it. it. That's it. Say, but but not? like I think my, my maybe my fashion and design experience has kind of led to this point as well to look at the automotive industry as something more than just wrenching and polishing. Like it's, there's there's more to it. Like these cars are art. Like um, and we should celebrate them as such. Yeah, we were talking about that off camera. There's so much more than just like cleaning the car. Mm. There's more than storing the car. Like, yeah, these are pieces of people's yeah. mm. uh, identity and what they you know what, yeah. how they feel about Attach themselves, it to and, themselves you know, and a clean car you feel better if you feel mm -hmm. better you have more possibilities it's kind of like the ammo underlying yeah. thing if you want to like wash a car just grab the soap off your sink and wash it go go nuts yeah i'm not saying that's the right way to do it but the people who appreciate mm -hmm. those things appreciate those things so yeah. Um, the fact that the vending machine was there i don't know why i was like <laughs> oh my gosh that's, yeah. symbolically that was like a huge thing because yep. 15 years ago that's what we talked about yeah. it's like uh, that would be so cool if we could do something and you guys actually yeah, executed awesome. it and put the screen in there yeah let, let put a little, yeah. little mini computer in there yeah light in the fourth man of yeah stash could, he's behind he's behind the camera right now yeah. he, he i'm waiting <laughs> later, the yeah. uh, he'll be the one pick packing all the ammo yeah yes, we need yes, him yes yeah, so in the b-roll in the uh the thing i shot behind the behind the scenes yeah uh, layton's in the that he had a fresh so. haircut too he looks good Looking yeah good. Looks we're gonna good. throw b-roll <laughs> yeah, like, he's, he's not even on camera he's yeah. right now. This is great. but yeah i think like th th these cars don't make sense like the relationship the relationship between the human and the car makes no sense i haven't had one person who says uh, uh, we like cars because X. There's no answer for why we're so emotionally engaged with these things. It, it's, is it an industrial revolution thing where we've kind of evolved into this kind of adoration for metal and wheels and progress? And is that like a primal thing? But I, yeah, look at this thing. What is like practical and useful about this thing? But why, why can we not stop looking at it? Why do we, why do we look at the back of a car and go, oh, like there's no answer. So... Yeah, roll I mean, with it and make it look good make it feel good make people feel special around yeah. it that's all i mean at this point like we have everything i'm reading this book archaeological um automobile mm -hmm. and it really talks about how cars have haven't gotten the the credit that they deserve it's a wonderful book i haven't finished it yet but they haven't gotten the credit that they deserve um for all the cultural things that have been brought with sure. the car meaning at the time of uh, this Model T and, and so forth that I'm, I'm in love with, like what was going on that it represents that time. But the thing that he, he hammered home and I was like, oh, that totally makes sense, is if you look at like a chalice or something and King whatever drank out of this thing and you, you go to a museum and you look at it and you're like, oh, that thing's, that's amazing. That's and cool. you read the yeah. story and you're like, mm. oh, that's so cool. And you move on to the next one, right? And you're like, here's a painting of whatever. Cars are the same kind of thing, but we get to literally mm. use them all the time. Even the old one there and the old one there mm. and the Model T, so you're telling a story, but that story hasn't ended. Mm -hmm. It's not like this is the guy who did the thing and he blah, 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 blah. And, and now it's behind glass. And you're, we did that. And now it got in the 40s. It was with this family in the 50s with this family. Mm -hmm. And now in 2000, whatever it is, you know, 24, it's now with the Casilla yeah. family. And I get to share it with my you see how it goes? Yeah. yeah. So Custodianship. He, yeah. It, it, I, I just thought it was fascinating because I never thought of it as an archaeological yeah. type thing yeah. where it, it tells a story in its time. Yeah. Well, and especially as the world shifts more technological and EV focused, right. these things are dinosaurs. So right. But they still work. I agree. <laughs> they yeah. still better, work, which is than, crazy. This is yeah. old tech. Like, better. That's they will old last tech longer. longer. Dude, the yeah. Model T, we started in like, I don't know, what was it, like 10 minutes or something we started that thing? <laughs> the, this old guy stuck his finger in like a plug, pulled it out, and we're like, bleh. And he's you know, like, what? he looks over, he's like, yeah, I think we're good. And I'm like, what? <laughs> you put it in there, put some fuel or oil, whatever, and the thing started out. I mean, we need to yeah. do a tune-up, et cetera. But like the yeah. fact that that ran yeah. was completely insane. So, yeah. 
Um, simple things. Yeah, the simple things I think are, are huge. Yeah. All right, guys, since we are launching Ammo Australia, let's talk a little bit about uh, the Ammo uh, launch itself, which we're doing in a little bit, and, and the products. What's your, uh, what, what made it go for you in terms of ammo? The smell, the, the, you know, how it goes on, et cetera? Yeah, so ammo is definitely heavily based on like beautiful smells. Like cosmetic -y is the, what we were kind of like, you know, I was telling you before off camera, my, my wife's hair smelled a certain way for foam. So I wanted, the experience was just as important as it actually functioning. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's very relatable to you at cars and then to taking care of yourself. Um, which, yeah, you kind of pick up, all right, do I need to wash? Do I need to condition? You kind of look at it the same way. Um, but yeah, the, the smell of blush especially, it just makes you enjoy the process of applying a wax to the car. Um, it's a bit like, I guess, cars, like Japanese cars have a smell and it's yeah. something that you want to keep owning Japanese cars yeah. because- Porsche has smell. the same thing, you get into an old mm. Porsche, you know, when you open the door and it yeah. has that same kind of like, like oh yeah. yeah. You know that as smells on a random, how smells of if you make them too good you can actually have an inverse relationship to liability where it's so good that people will be think about licking them and eating them isn't that isn't that wild that that's something that you actually have to consider well i want to yeah, yeah, <laughs> i gotta knock it down yeah. a little bit i, can't I want to you burn your blush yeah, like a I candle and see well, what happens we're, like thinking, coaster. we're actually thinking of doing that that's yeah, something i didn't know i was like is that off brand is that too mm, weird yeah. to have a candle like Bunch of guys in Once there washing it, their though. car with the candles everywhere. Uh, right. Wife comes out like, what the heck is going on in here? We got Just incense and candles going on in there. And <laughs> exactly. It's 2024. Yeah. Get on board. Right? <laughs> yeah, but can you imagine like my insurance guys, like you have to make it so that it's no not so close to something candy like. I, was yeah. like I have never, that's just not a part of my brain yeah. that like function like, oh yeah, we can't make it too good because yeah. people will lick it. It's, it's like, what? So anyways, yes. Well, I think it's hydrate. You come out of the office all oh, the damn. time. Oh, yeah. Hydrate. Uh, just, I like it. <laughs> just, just, just I start sniffing the rags after he's done with it too. It's pretty twisted. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. That's yeah. a whole and other thing. Yeah. Well, speaking of that, Obey. on that note, uh, that Patrick's is coming here. My boy, this uh, buddy Patrick's. Is it just Patrick's, not Patrick's? It's Doctor. Patrick's. Patrick's. Doctor. Patrick from Patrick's. Yeah, Patrick's from Patrick's is coming here and he has a whole... Um, Caroline, and that's how we sort of uh, became friends or, or whatever, based on, uh, I saw that, uh, based on uh, 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 the, the way his stuff smells and, and what yeah, have you. It's delicious. But I do think there is something to be said about the car being clean and mm -hmm. then your body being clean and then, you know, this like future mission. Yeah, let's talk about the future a little bit of, um, you know, potentially having like yeah. floor care and yeah. like, I, I, I mean, I clean my toilets just as much as I do the car yeah. and mm. the sink and like in real life. Like that's a, that's I think a thing. that's how the best things are born as well. Like we started this as an umbrella company. It'd be like, it could be anything. Right. It could be boats, wine, to brokerage, to anything. Are you guys talking about selling cars here? Yeah, like like selling... we're, we're, it's a work in progress. Is yeah. that a thing you're like we don't, we want to focus our attention on like really getting this right and yeah. then maybe, but it's got to be with the right people. Yeah, it has All to be with people, the right people. People, people, people. Um, that's true. And we're fortunate to work with some really you guys are, you cool have people. everything on lockdown. That's the one thing I've really noticed. Like he's got the design on lockdown. You got the, you know, yeah. the P&L and all the finances. Yep. He's definitely got the detailing. Yep. You got the boss over there in he's terms the of brand. The IT and everything. Yep. Like this place is. But it's people it's, yeah. and it's yeah. funny. And you, Scott's always been really good at harvesting like people long term. And it's been like you, it's like, I, and it's not, you've got that degree or you, <clears throat> you know, you, you've studied for that or it's like, you're the right personality to do that work. Yeah. We were talking about that in the car ride. Yeah, back. was like it? The, you can train. staff has been here for like, each yeah. guy's been here for like 20 years yeah. or something like that. Hey, that's crazy. You can train the, skills, the you can't train personality. Yeah. That's yeah. The, yeah. just the biggest difference. Right. And work ethic and all that sort of stuff. But, but um, bro brokerage is a kind of, a, again, an obvious transition, well not transition, an obvious arm to grow. Um, lots of stuff happens in house. So like people walk past and they go, I like that. Go. Well, do you want to talk to them? Yeah. Mm. And everyone's got their price and everyone's happy to talk. And so we've moved heaps of cars between customers. <laughs> just as like pure, just, just because we out. can and yeah. because it's no, they stay. part of the community. <laughs> oh, that's, oh, that's, yeah. that's good. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. they don't have any room elsewhere. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> Sells it and it goes out. Yeah. Like, what the heck was that? Yeah. yeah, yeah it just never leaves the parking spot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
But obviously, like if people do need to move cars, we'll assist them and and put them in touch with the right people. And because what's good for them is good for us, and the world keeps See, spinning. Even when we were driving in here, that that guy with the, what was that? That red car? I forget what it was. MX Five. MX5. Oh, the MX5. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were like, oh, I sold that one. And I was like, oh, cool. And you're like, oh, no, that's really, that's, that was our car. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, actually rolled out oh, 20 minutes full. You yeah. saw it? Oh, yesterday. On, on Windsor oh, Road. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. The old so dude cool. driving it or something. Yeah. That was... He was happy as Larry. That was through sort of one of our um, partners, Sports Classic. So they, yeah, they brokered that deal for us. And, hmm. you know, it's where we know the right people to talk to to move different cars, which is also very unique. And to do like good enough reputation for us to refer them and know that they're not going to burn that person and then yeah. us look like the fools for referring them right, as well it's all right. <laughs> that's probably just as important because yeah. if we recommend it it's sort of it's got the ammo yeah. and stash tick of approval it's like well no they're gonna they're gonna be able to live up to yeah it that was a big deal standard when doing the, the whole uh, detailing thing that was part of it not just like the products and the people and making sure that we can actually physically get the product out mm. i wanted to make sure that my son here was able to you know to keep that high standard because we get a lot of requests it's a thing that i'm getting now um and i think that i'm gonna get a ton more with with yeah. all the stuff launching like hey dude like what what the hell man like you get it's like do you understand it took two years to come yeah and so we get a lot of requests which is so amazing and i, I don't mean anything other than uh humble like it's, it's great but there's a certain level that we need to make sure that we maintain it and hit mm. when we're doing yeah. this. And I think that's what was the, not the hang up, but why I've been so like, uh, I'm nervous to let go. I mean, it's you your, understand, it's your my child. baby, yeah, I'm like, I baby. don't want yeah. to. So to, I'm just trying to emphasize the point to be able to comfortably release. Mm. I'm saying release yeah. mentally here, ammo. Cause I don't, I, I'm not like, hey, I'll just stop over. No. There's two days to get here, you know what I mean? So it's yeah. not like, I can just zip over and make sure everything like I am. I've been so uh, just pleased with how everything looks and how it's presented. And, and, and if anything, it's actually brought more to the ammo brand than than mm. has weighted down. Thank we're, you. We're the only people that can have your ammo logo. You're, you are literally the, the only people anywhere that in the world. That's yeah. correct. So that's weird. huge you know, amount it's of a, responsibility. It's a, it's, it's a it's a big deal. So it's like today has been more. Um, I mean, exciting and wonderful, and I'm in a new country, and it's amazing, all that, but it's also slightly emotional and like, mm. oh my gosh, you know, 12 or 13 years to have the first yeah. mm. whatever, so it's, it's, a, it's more than I could ever translate it's into. Progress. It. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's even, progress. like I, um, we obviously had to um, trial the product and test the product, make sure we were happy with the product, right. make sure we liked the product so that we were happy to sell the product. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the thing for me is that the product uh, is developed by you, you know what you want, you know what um, cars want. And the range allows me personally here as a detailer to offer what they actually need and not what they think that they want, mm -hmm. um, which most products are heavily based on one sort of thing and the consumer thinks that that's what they want. But We could get into, and, you just, and this is when I start going, like, yeah. we can get into like a three hour podcast, but I'll do, a, 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 <laughs> I can't help myself. <laughs> The, if you know more, as you, as you start to learn the behind the scenes of how the retail market works, it's kind of frightening, hence the reason why I started the actual why of the company all those years ago was I started learning more about how the products were being made and how they were being sold in terms of the marketing mm -hmm. and the manufacturing of it. And it was so fascinating. I tell this story, I've never told this story to you guys, but I've done it in past podcasts. But when I started manufacturing for another company, when I was uh, even younger than he is, and making it, and I was doing the mobile detailing stuff on the side, uh, which was my main gig, and then I was making product for another company. Now the backstory goes, I was helping them make uh, you know, more uh, uh, compounds and more polishes and more um, uh, lubrication here and more to remove the lubrication. I need more emulsion. I was trying to make it so they would actually uh, work on a car. I know you're like, well, what are you, t what are you getting at? There's chemists that just make stuff, but they don't actually use it. Mm -hmm. and I was like, how do you, how do you know if this is? Uh, I think this is the greatest formula. Like, have you ever polished a car? They're like, no. I'm like, well, how the hell do you know that yeah. this makes any sense? So fast forward, I was making these products, and during that time when I was working for somebody else, uh, the, the the example I'm trying to give to you right now is to make car soap. Uh, it's sort of, and I use the very loose analogy like. Um, I would imagine drugs are being made, right? Where you make uh, a, a, like a concentrated version and then cut it up and then kind of uh, weaken it, right? And so they can spread it out 
uh, I said that in a bad way because I'm not, uh, I'm not a drug dealer, but you get my point, like, right? <laughs> yes, they, they, make, they cut it up and they make it so it's less. Uh, they did a pretty good job, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm not. Really. <laughs> um, so uh, what we would do, and we were making soap in these huge vats, like um, almost like, like, uh, like a jacuzzi size thing, probably a little bit bigger than a jacuzzi. And when we put the, the ingredients in to make soap, one of the ingredients that I didn't realize uh, towards the end, as you're mixing this, there's a big, it's a vat, it's this big paddle in there. And it's like mm. a, a bathtub full of stuff that looks like soap and smells mm. like soap, but it's kind of, the viscosity is very low. Um, or actually in this case, viscosity is very high and I'll say why it gets low, meaning it's, it's very watery. We would take six, six, pound, uh, six bags, 90 pounds each. I would take a razor blade, lean over the edge, and cut in NACL. Do you know what NACL is? It the, is. Uh, the NA. Chlorine? No. Salt. Salt. Oh, salt. I've listened to enough. Oh, you listen to <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You ATA. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So he would pour, I would pour all these salt in. And basically, when I poured the salt in, the viscosity became very thick. It was much higher. It like, ugh, kind of became molasses. Why? Because then we could cut it and put water in it and then spread more of it out. And I was like, oh, that totally makes sense. And then I was like, wait a second. I went to the CEO of the company I was working for. I was like, aren't we putting salt in the, like, what the, that doesn't make any sense. We're washing salt off our car, but we're putting salt on the product to wash the salt. It doesn't, and he's like, listen to me, just do the thing, blah, 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 blah. And that's what spurred on the why, where mm. I was like, I became so angry that I, I saw behind the scenes of what was being made and nobody seemed to care because they just wanted to make more. And I get, and I, and I appreciate it and I understand it. And the guy that was doing it, that I was working for, just wasn't a car guy. It's just, I'm selling a widget. It just happens to be in the shape of car soap. Yep. I don't care. Um, and that was the push behind all that. So the reason I'm saying all these things and the, and the why was so strong that I felt like people like Brody and myself and detailers, we got like a, the throw the key syndrome. Like, mm. you know, just go clean my car, get the car out of here. Like you're, you're lower than, and so this um, emotion and, and drive, passion, and I can't think right. of the right, the passion, and it's, it's so much more than that, yeah. uh, to release all of this atom bomb inside of me mm. to another company and fly literally on the other side of the planet to do it. Yeah. Um, I, I it's think a bigger deal. I think you picked Australia as a huge viewer base for your brand. But being so geographically far away from right. where you guys ship from in America makes complete sense. And we have a huge car community, as you've seen driving around the last two days. Yeah. Uh, Aussies love cars, there's no doubt about it. We, because we're so big, we have to use them to travel around. So it's ingrained in our society, is mm -hmm. cars. And every Aussie likes to look after their cars, no doubt about it, whether it's four drive, sports car, race car whatever, everyone washing your car on a Saturday morning is a bit of a ritual. So yeah. we feel that there's a huge opportunity for ammo product in, in Australia because we're, we're yearning for some amazing product and, and that's ammo. So, and it's the, the barrier to buy it from you previously. And we just we used to high. sell a ton. We, we sold a ton to Australia. This yep. was like pre-COVID. And, and, and people would pay, it was a high price. Now it's, I mean, it's comical. It's like four times as much as the price. I'm like, guys, don't buy it. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make any sense. Um, so it, now this is logical. So yep. Yep. Yeah, anyways, we're, we're super stoked to be here. Yep. Um, I think I would love to be more expressive, but I'm exhausted. <laughs> kind of thing. But I just wanted to make sure people understood that uh, one, I'm very grateful to be here. And, and, and of course the relationship and we're yeah. excited about all this stuff. The fact that we, uh, are filming this right now and there's like hundreds of people or whatever, you know, in the driveway. That's yeah. kind of exciting as yeah. well. Uh, you know, that kind yeah. of thing. So, um, as always guys, I wanted to shoot a quick podcast, introduce you to the crew. Um, if you're in Australia, obviously stop by email, et cetera, and uh, store your car here, pick up some products or order it online. Um, but I, I just felt that I wanted to have a quick conversation via podcast so that I, I think the people will understand why I did this here with you specifically, mm. if that makes sense, as opposed to just like, yeah, we're open up distribution. It'd be so easy to open up distribution sure. yeah. with ammo. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, seriously, like as quick as that. Yeah. Just no, I just couldn't, I just feel that, you know, it's yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm I'm scary. Scary. I can't, yeah. I can't do that. And so to be able yeah. to do this with you guys is, well, it's, uh, it's not I don't want to be a horse, but it's not lost on us at all. Like, yeah. we're, we're incredibly grateful for it and we want to do it justice. And I think we understand the importance of a small business and what that means to you over the, the I can't imagine handing mm. over something after that many years. And I think you embrace the same why I think I've, I'm trying to articulate why yeah. it made sense to me. I'm like, yeah, you, I feel like you guys have the same. Yeah. why the reason the passion for, for, for doing this kind of thing and so have, anyhow have fun along the way i appreciate you guys being here 
Actually, let me reverse. Oh, you that. Baby. I, I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Usually, I'm in my yeah, seat. Yeah, yeah. Like, Thanks for being here. Yeah. I see. How I went into my normal. Isn't that yeah. funny? I'm like, thank you. All right, guys. Uh, anyways, yeah. I'm grateful for being here. You guys yeah. live here and enjoy yourself. Um, cars are actually starting to roll in right now, which is exciting. Yeah. Uh, we'll post this up pretty soon. But if you're uh, if you're in the area, obviously uh, stop by and reach out to Stash. But the uh, the website is still ammonyc.com for US and ammonyc. AU for Australia. So check it out. So as guys, thanks for watching. Be well and we'll talk soon. Thanks, Larry. Thank you. Thank you. you got Thanks, it. Larry.